Hi Bag Builders, it's Diane from Spencer Rugg Sewing Patterns. Thank you for joining me. As usual, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please do subscribe to the channel, ring the bell below to be notified of all my video tutorials going forward. So as we get in close to Christmas, I wanted to make something that was easy to make and ideal for gifting. My mind went into happy overdrive coming up with all sorts of little ideas for gifting and I developed so many I decided to make it into a free mini series of mini makes. So what is a bag buddy? Well it's a cute little item that helps you organise all the clutter that you have in your bag. And if you're anything like me there's an awful lot of clutter in the bottom of your bag. Make one bag buddy or make a few. Wrap them in tissue and pop them into one of the downloadable gift boxes that I've developed specifically for them. Perfect for gifting for Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, any days. They're just so chuffing cute. Who wouldn't want a couple of these? And they're just so easy to make. So who's up for a jolly fun sewing and crafting afternoon? Packed with little projects that are really easy to make. It's just about the fun. You don't need any previous skills. They're all totally beginner friendly and virtually instant results. I would apologise for the simplicity of some of them, but why? It's all really good fun and they're all so useful. So these are my little bag buddies, lots of quick mini projects ideal for gifting. I'll be sharing one or two a week here on YouTube, so do subscribe and ring the bell to be notified as each one is released. Each bag buddy will have a printable pattern piece and a video tutorial. By the end, you'll have a whole range of little bag buddies. All you need is a tiny scrap of non-fraying fabric and the odd plastic snap for most of them. And just to make them into an even better gift, I've designed a range of free gift boxes for them for you to download along with the pattern. Different designs for different occasions. Print straight from your home printer onto card, cut them out, fold them into shape and personalise them with your own message. I'll release a different design every week along with a new bag buddy. And if you're looking for a specific occasion design that I've missed, just drop a message below and I can always add a new one in. The pattern pieces and the boxes are completely free to download from the files section on my Facebook group. For the link, just scroll down below to show more. It's in the text below the video. Print them off at 100% scale and check that your one inch square size checkbox does measure the one inch before you start cutting your fabric. If you're not sure about printing PDF patterns, then I do have a video to, um, to show you how to do that. And you can also to show you how to resize things if you want to. And I'll put the link in somewhere here, hopefully. But there'll be a link in below as well. Print your gift boxes onto printable cardboard, which you can use in your home printer, and it makes them nice and sturdy. Just fold them up and away you go. I also use plastic snaps in a lot of these projects. In fact, all of them. Um, so hopefully you've got some plastic snaps in your armory. If you haven't, then the sets are widely available on Amazon and eBay, and you can buy them quite cheaply. Um, I'll put a link to the set that I used in the, link, in, in the text below. And if you're not sure how to use them, I've also got a YouTube tutorial on that. Again, I'll put the link in below and maybe up here somewhere if I know how to. Um, so just check down underneath the video where it says show more for all the different links. So what are we waiting for? Let's go so. So this is the first of my Bag Buddies tutorials, which I'll be releasing weekly. Today's Bag Buddies tutorial is for a key fob or a travel lock holder. It works both ways, either as a daily item for your keys or as a mini padlock holder to hang from your travel case. It's super easy to make and really beginner friendly. Fastens with a plastic popper, so you have a strap that you can just pull the lock or the keys inside the holder and snap the strap onto your luggage. Make them in any non-frame fabric. Here I've made a chocolate version in vinyl and here a nice bright version in cork. You can add extras like the decorative keys or the bright padlocks and I'll tell you where I purchased mine from later. And they also come with a printable gift box for you to present your fabulous handmade item in. So if you're ready, let's sew. So things you'll need for the project, obviously print your pattern pieces off. We're going to need a scrap of 
outer fabric, so that could be anything that doesn't fray, cork, leather, vinyl, oil cloth. We need some all-purpose thread to match. A set of plastic snap fasteners. And for this project we need a split ring. I've used a three-quarter inch one, but um, you know, have a ferret around in your in your hardware drawers to see what you've got. Most rings will uh, will be fine as long as they're not too big. And optional, I'm going to use a little bit of glue. This is Fabri-Tac permanent adhesive for fabrics. Or you can use a little bit of double-sided tape. Or you don't need to use anything at all if you don't have anything around. So first of all, I'm going to cut around my pattern pieces. The easiest way I find on small things like this is to just cut around the pattern pieces so it's really close to the pattern that lines the pattern itself, but not quite, just so I'm leaving a small margin around the outside. And those are my paper scissors, by the way, not my fabric scissors. And small things like this, it's really important to cut accurately. So I find the easiest way to do that is actually to stick the pieces onto the fabric. You can stick them to the front or to the back. I'm just using a little bit of clear tape so you can see the line of the pattern piece underneath. And with the strap piece, that's actually cut on the fold at the bottom edge. So I'll just trim that down. So I'm on the line at the bottom. Fold my piece of fabric in half and line that up with the bottom. So my cut on fold is right on the fold itself. Make sure your fabric is lying straight. And now I can cut those out along the lines and make sure it's nice and accurate. See, it just falls off as you cut along the lines. I mean, if you find it easier, you can print this strap twice and just attach it at the cut on fold line. So you're just cutting in a single layer. That would make it more accurate again, of course. I'm going to put a clip on that, that'll help. Yeah, I'll save that bit, we don't want to waste any. Okay, so there's our pattern pieces cut out, you can take that off now. Let's see, that's double, but it's going to sit on top of each other. Now we do need a little slit in the top of here for our strap to fold through, or to push through. So if you just fold that in half, fold your pattern piece in half. lay it on top you just cut out on the half that little semicircle there hopefully that's central there we go it's not got a little bit more there now we don't want this hole too big because we want it as a at a size that that disc isn't going to pull through but you've got a little bit of leeway so first of all let's sort our strap out I'm going to add my split ring onto the strap just into the centre and I want those lying nicely on top of each other so I'm going to use a little bit of glue today but you can use a little strip of double sided tape or nothing you can just clip it at the sides and just find it is anything to keep it as as accurate as possible you don't want the lid off it'll be all over the place won't it Uh, just a little line of glue to temporarily hold it there, temporarily. Let's slide it into place. Flip it over, make sure it's sitting nice. Yep. And then I'm going to take that to my machine and I'm going to stitch a line of stitching centrally right from the centre of that disc at the end all the way along to close up to the 
the split ring. It doesn't have to be too close, don't worry about getting right up to it. It'll stay, it's just really to keep it in place, so it doesn't matter if it's an inch away, it's fine like that. So as I'm stitching cork, I've got a Microtex needle on my machine. I've got my stitch length set to about three. And I'm going to change my foot just to a regular foot because I want to be in the centre there. And I'll just sew that into place. Back stitch beginning and end. There we go, trim that up. Any ends. Got a right bird's nest on that side. Don't worry about it because our popper's going to be hiding that anyway. And now I'm going to add a plastic snap to the centre of that disc. So I'm going to grab the male side. If you want a guide for that, the pattern piece does have a little um, dot in the centre. So you can just lay that on the top. Grab your pointy tool. My technical term. And push that through at the dot, so that will give you a nice central point for your popper. Add the cap through. The point comes out the other side. Add my mail part and then I shall grab my Mr Squeaky tool. Here's the pliers for my snaps, just slot it in. Here's the squeakiest tool ever. And there we go, that's our strap completed. So now we're moving on to the fob itself. So now I want to attach the female part of the snap to the fob part. So I'll grab my other side of the snap and again, you can measure up about two centimetres or three quarters of an inch on one side, or there is a dot on the pattern piece. Just lay that on top and push your pointy tool through. It's just one side we're going through, not both. And I'm going to attach my popper through that single layer. So this time the cap needs to go on the reverse. So the wrong side of the fabric, push it through the hole you made. To the side, put your female part of the popper on there, grab your own Mr Squeaky and fix that in place. There we go, so that's our second side. So now fold it back over itself so the slanted edges match up, wrong sides together. We're matching up all the way around. Clip it in place. Make sure everything matches up neatly because that's its final position and you're going to see those raw edges. So now I'm going to take that to the machine and I'm going to stitch up each side at 3mm or an eighth of an inch from the edge. Starting at the bottom here with the long slanted edge and finishing on or just before the folded edge at the top. I tend to finish just a little bit before so you keep the fold nice and rounded. Stitch beginning and end, of course. Trim up. Trimity trim trim. You can never do too much trimming, you know me. I like to trim at every point. Don't leave it to the end because you'll have thousands of ends to cut off if you're on a big project. Much easier and much tidier to do it as you go along. Okay, we're more or less finished now. All we need to do is push this popper section up through the top hole so you want the male part on the top the cap underneath and your female part on the top there push it up through the hole you made at the top you might have to bend it to get it through that first time there we go and there we are so you can just attach your keys and then bend that back over and pop it in place so let me grab a couple of keys so it's a great to give just like that but you could also add a couple of little items just to make it extra special. I mean, I found things on 
um, Amazon. You could add a couple of antique keys, pull them inside, just really for show. Sure. They're not for anything special. Not going to open any secret doors, or maybe they do. I found some cute little heart locks, I and mean, I think they were only a few pounds for six or seven pieces. But I did like these actually, some bright colours. You get a bunch of bright coloured padlocks. I think it was about six pounds for seven. It was quite cheap. Um, I'll put some links in below to the things I found anyway, and then you can. Um, put on there whatever you like. I'll just add this because I think it adds that little bit extra. Just forgiving. Yeah, so you could pop a little lock on as an extra gift. And that just pulls right inside, hidden away. Pop it on to your strap or your luggage, or your handbag. And what a fantastic gift. And if you want a lovely way to present that, I have designed a range of gift boxes. They're really easy to construct. Handmade, thank yous, even Christmas. I'll do some more if you'd like them later on in the series. And those are really easy to make, so I'll just give you a quick whip through the construction of those if you haven't made a pillow box before. But they do make a nice little presentation box. So grab one of your pillow box templates. I'll make this one today. Just cut around the outsides. Grab a ruler and a bone folder or something similar. You can use the edge of your scissors if you prefer. I have this little tool if you've done card making and things before or even for marking fabric those are great and we're just going to score along each of those dotted lines so grab a little glue you can use a glue stick or even a little bit of double-sided tape so we're just going to fold in half there fold the lip back on the top you want a little bit of glue or sticky tape on that lip because I haven't got any glue stick I'm just going to use some fabric tack again which works fine too stick that lip down to the wrong side of the back so you've got that you've got the structure already I'm not wiping my fingers on my trousers as we speak. And then you just fold the ends in, so open it up slightly and fold those sides inwards carefully, just along those dotted lines. Be careful not to drop any water or your cup of tea on them, because obviously if you printed them directly from your regular home printer, probably will run there we go there's a gorgeous little box ready for our gift so grab a little bit of tissue paper wrap your gift and it's ready pop in our gift box Ready for gifting, even put a ribbon on it and hang it on the tree. Who wouldn't be pleased with that? So I hope you enjoyed today's fun and easy tutorial. The Bag Buddies tutorials will be running weekly for the next few weeks, so please do subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when each one comes out. And don't forget to post your pictures on my bag making Facebook board. Do join the group, post your pictures, you know I love to see them. So what are you waiting for? Go so!